Hi. Quite early on in the Bible, we're told that we're made in the image of God. I don't know about you, but I've never felt less sometimes made in the image of God. We see um, the Bible describe God as uh, all powerful and we read stories of how mighty he is. Um, of how enormous and great his love is. He created the world. His voice holds such power. He's slow to anger. He has compassion and such patience with us. And I think, am I really reflecting my maker? accurately at all and we're told to be Christ-like and I'm so desperate to be Christ-like I want to be Christ-like oh, but he was so good with people wasn't he I mean not all the people he he did lose it occasionally but when he lost it he really lost it with the right people didn't he <laughs> And he made an impact, his presence, his words. And the time that he spent with his father. Which I've just done like 20 minutes of silence with God. I'm trying to um, be still and know that God is God and get to know God in stillness and in silence. 20 minutes was tough. I'm going to keep going, but. Jesus spent like the whole morning just being with his father. Being Christ-like seems so out of my reach. I don't know how you're feeling. Earlier on um, this year, I got given a, a gift of a bit of money, which was really lovely. And um, I chose, and I've always really wanted this, to um, buy a nativity set, a wooden nativity set. And in Godly Play, it's it's called the Holy Family, the Holy Family. And so the Holy Family arrived by post um, earlier this year. And um, and it was a wonderful gift. And it's a very tactile kind of set that I love holding. And um, the two parts of the nativity that I keep on my desk and I, um, I haven't put away in the bag and I, I'm not waiting till Christmas or until I get to tell a godly play story with them. I have them on my desk and the first one is of Christ, as you'd expect from a nativity set. The Christ child, so that's the Christ child here, he's in a manger. And I have that on my desk because it reminds me um, that actually sometimes being Christ-like is about being vulnerable and is about a dependency on others and of not being able to do it all myself. And in those moments, I think, well, maybe I can reflect something of Christ, in Christ's vulnerability, and in his weakness. And I've just been uh, reading um, Exodus uh, chapters... 32, 33, 34. It's kind of reading those three to get chapters together has been um, helpful. And um, and in that, it's really interesting because actually God is angry and God is frustrated and God changes his mind and maybe wants to do things differently. And we're not really told much about those traits of God, are we? Because in our worship songs, we worship the all-powerful, all-knowing, the God that's in control. So the God that's angry and frustrated and the God that has his mind changed. I just begin to think, well, maybe I do reflect something of God. Maybe 
I can see something of his image in me. It feels really risky saying that. Um, and I'm just kind of thinking it through. So, But I just thought I wanted to share it with you. And then the uh, other part of the nativity that I have on my desk, and this doesn't make it into the traditional nativity scenes, is the risen Christ. And the risen Christ stands at the back. Um, and I have the risen Christ alongside the, the, the Christ child, the Christ that is in a manger, because I remember, it reminds me of the, yes, the vulnerability of Christ, but also the power. And even in my weakness, even when I'm feeling so, so inadequate, God's spirit is at work in me. God's power is at work in me. The power of the risen Christ. Where death is defeated, where hope is realised, and that power is at work in you too. And so whether you're feeling vulnerable and frustrated, angry, whether you're changing your mind, know that you do reflect something of your maker. And may you be open to God's spirit being at work in you in the most unexpected of ways as you bring hope to the people that you love and you serve. <laughs>